up, my homies? It's your boy, the Gelinator, and I'm back to doing stop motions. Well, sort of. I was taking a lot of hiatus from doing stop motions because I was running out of ideas of what stories I want for them. But anyway, on for the review. Here we have Warrior Class Night Ops. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to be excited for this thing. This is Warrior Class Night Ops Bumblebee from the show Robots in Disguise. And the toy itself is not really that good in my opinion, but we'll explain that later once we get into the toy. Let's start with Video Mode, and I love how it looks. The design of it feels like it's taken straight out of the cartoon, the painting and the mod design of it. And the best part about it, it has no kibble. Not on the side, not on the front, not even on the back. Unless you look on the underside, but really who looks on the underside of a car? Unless you're working on it, really. And as far as what the car is based on in real life, uh, really, it's not really based on any particular brand of a car, but I can say it has a body shape of a muscle car from the late 1900s. Something like the Camaro that he was in the movies. So on to size comparisons. Here's Robots in the Sky's Steel Jaw from the same toy line, and uh, the scaling feels kinda off. Like, shouldn't a truck be much bigger than the muscle car? I don't know, it just feels very off to me. And next we have Soundwave in his... military truck mode? What? I don't even know what form this is. Overall, the scaling just feels just as bad as well. And next we have Windblade in her plane mode. I'm not sure exactly what plane this is, but I actually like the scaling here. It feels pretty decent. I think I mentioned this in her review a few years back. But overall, it doesn't look that bad. How about scaling for other toys in other universes? Like Movieverse Barricade. The scaling here feels pretty accurate if you compare it to the very first movie. And here's Jazz in his vehicle mode. And the scaling here feels just as good. Pretty decent. Not too bad. And then we have RC in her vehicle mode. And... Uh, well, her car mode isn't really based on anything either. So I can't really say the size comparison here. But it does feel kind of off as well. So now we get to transformation, and this is where it leads to some problems with the robot mode. Start by lowering the rear end of the car and lift the roof to the front hood of the car. On the underside, flip the doors on the rear end to the car and then split the arms. And then flip up the feet. Spin his torso around and then lift the roof to reveal his head and then split up his legs. And here we have Bumblebee in his robot mode. Very short and simple transformation. Now personally, I don't like the robot mode here. Though it does look nice, the fact that it did came straight from the cartoon, but just playing with the thing just feels kind of off to me. I used to like it in the past, but now it just doesn't age well. As far as design goes, let's start with the legs. As accurate it is to the cartoon, the front of the legs feels way too flat like like really flat like it doesn't really look as chunky as it would in the cartoon and also if you wonder why this modern clay on one of his tires is because it broke off as i was playing with it one of the little studs fell off which makes the tire look like this and now we get to the back of the legs and it looks terrible like why is the roof of the car the back of the legs shouldn't it be the chest me personally for transformer toys i prefer where the front bump of the car is actually the chest and the legs being the back end of the car kind of like jazz and barricade here for example in robot mode you can tell that the front end of the car is actually their chest and the rear end being the bottom and the roof being the back side obviously in vehicle mode you can kind of see where i'm talking about the front end being the chest and the back end being the legs but bumblebee here is more like wheeljack and cliff jumper here whereas the front end of the car being the feet and the back end of the car is being used as some sort of backpack and the chest of the robot mode is the roof of the car and you can also see that in car mode from front and back but with bumblebee here no they have the roof of the car being the back of his legs instead of the chest it doesn't even look right at all <sighs> Also, you might have noticed that Bombi's hand is also broken. It got like this as I was messing with the toy as well, when I was playing with it and using it during stop motion. Meaning that he can hold his one single accessory, the Decepticon Hunter Sword. And 
I don't get why it's translucent blue. It should have been plastic with paint all over it. But it looks cool, but at the same time, it just feels like a holographic sword. And speaking of his chest, it's just as accurate as the cartoon. I still wish the roof was part of it, though. And you might notice something different about his Autobot symbol there. His Autobot symbol is used as a scan feature for the mobile game that you can put on your phone or tablet. And once you play the game, you, you switch to the scan mode, turn on the camera, and then you have to scan the symbol of your Decepticon or Autobot toy. And once you scan it, the toy gets transferred into the game and you play as that toy. Some of the toys, however, can just give you items. I don't know why some of them aren't really part of the game. And another thing, this app is removed from all stores for Apple and Android. Unless you were to download a APK file onto your phone or tablet and then play it that way. Which I honestly don't recommend because you might end up getting either malware or a virus to your phone or tablet. So be careful. In his head, also based off the cartoon, which also features light piping. And speaking of head, we get to articulation. His head is on a ball joint with limited left and right articulation. His shoulders are on a ball joint which kind of acts as a butterfly joint for, for 360 rotation. His biceps are on a hinge for outward movement. His elbow is on a hinge for a 90 degree movement and it also rotates. A waist swivel here. His thighs has backward, forward, and outward movement and a limited knee bend due to the roof on the back of his leg. FUN! And also his toe has upward movement due, only due to transformation. So really his pulse ability is mostly limited, so the only poses I can think of him doing is dabbing or folding his arms. Really basic poses, really. So on the size comparisons, here's Windblade, Soundwave, and Steeljaw. And just for fun, here's Raphael, Ben Riley Spider-Man, and my last review, Dragon Ball Stars Broly. So that's it for Warrior Class Night Ops Bumblebee. He's really not that good of a figure, and I don't recommend buying him. Not this particular one, anyway. I get they're making this toy straight from the cartoon, which in my opinion wasn't that good to begin with. <laughs> but the end result was kind of embarrassing and really sad, and I really plan on replacing this particular Bumblebee with another one, because I had a... Because a few years back, I used to have a Dark of the Moon Bumblebee, and I wanted to replace him because some of his joints kept falling off and were very loose. And I used this Bumblebee as a replacement, and after a while, I just ended up hating this particular toy. So I gotta replace it with another Bumblebee! How fun. But anyways, thank you guys so much for liking. Zap that like button and subscribe. Leave a comment below telling me what you think of this video, this toy review. Click on the notification bell to check out for more videos. If you can't wait for more, always check out my own ones. This is the John Lander signing out. Peace out, my homies. Winners, 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 winners are my homies.